You have a lot of people who want to be CEO, the boss, the man, the decision maker, the shot caller. But who's doing the work? One of the things I've noticed on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, virtually all over the internet, there's a great deal of conversation about being the boss, being your own woman, being your own man. But there's not a lot of conversation about technical proficiency. If you want to run your own business, I'm going to tell you some things that you need to do to be successful. I understand that you want your mansion now. I understand you want your beautiful sports car now. I totally understand that you want the house with the pool now. But if you take a few moments and listen to me, you can get that and a lot more. All right, so let's roll up our sleeves and get into it. The big problem I see with many entrepreneurs is they're not technically proficient in anything. Nothing. Not technically proficient with email, not technically proficient with Facebook, not technically proficient with YouTube or Instagram. And I'm seeing something that is happening here on YouTube. People that are technically proficient, really solid in one area, or exploding to 100, 2, and 300,000 subscribers in less than a year. Because the one thing that they know how to do, they know how to do it very well. They, they, they can clamp down on it and they can make it happen. There's a lot of people who are not really doing that well. Like my channel, I already know the problem. It's just too chock full of too many different types of content, which in about six months, I should be able to finally turn it around. But how do I know this? I'm technically proficient at making videos. And you know, it's one thing for me to say that. Now a lot of people are like, hey, you know, you only got like 78,000 subscribers. I know people with a million, blah, blah, blah. Watch me. Part of this is hours and hours and hours and hours of doing video. And one of the things I feel that YouTube is the hardest platform to master. If you can master YouTube, and I would say Instagram is a close second, if you can master those two, you can make millions, millions of dollars. And then we have to ask ourselves, why is YouTube so hard? Because there's pretty much, if you have a format, there can be 20 steps to 100 steps to make a video. And you're like, whoa, 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 what? what? Yeah, and you know, the days of just slapping some stuff up on YouTube, that's been over for a while. But if you're technically proficient, you understand this and you can start a channel and be at 6k subs and i hear that they're sending out the play buttons super super quick like lightning fast you fill it out one week next week you got your little shiny play button let's get away from youtube let's get into technical proficiency in marketing and sales very few people want to do this very few people want to even get into this they feel for some reason that that is beneath them and this isn't something that they need to learn. This isn't something that, hey, I need to learn how to be a better marketer. I need to learn how to be good at sales. If you devoted three years to marketing, you would make more money in that fourth year than you made in the three years combined. But once again, people are just like, ah, I don't have time for that. I need my money now. I need my house in the pool now. But here is a startling truth. If you don't take the time to become technically proficient somewhere, you're going to get left behind. I want you to think about how long you've been on YouTube. I want you to think about how many YouTube videos you've watched. And I also want you to think about how many people are still on YouTube that were on YouTube five years ago. A lot of these channels are gone. A lot of the early YouTube stars, they have regular jobs now. Part of that is many of them outgrew their audience. Ask yourself, why are these people gone? They know how to do YouTube videos. It's a combination of YouTube changed and marketing changed. And if you were to stay abreast of the stuff, because this is another thing, if you're gonna make money online, you're gonna be in a constant state of evolution. 
You're gonna be constantly learning stuff. You're gonna be looking at this equipment. You're gonna be looking at this platform. You are going to be constantly growing. But if you're not in a state of constant growth and you're not paying attention to what's happening, um, some bad things can happen. Like you could lose your business. One of the big things that I had to do was get back to basics, get back to making videos because live streams are pretty easy. You come on, you, you know, well, they're easy for me because I've done probably a thousand of them by now. I don't want to lose this ability to make videos. And that's something that's going to happen because live streams have their place. They're very powerful. You can make a lot of money with live streams. YouTube will treat your live streams very differently. And I've noticed something on this channel. You know, I don't make videos every day. At one point I was cranking them out that now my standalone videos are getting more views. It's like it's going up because I'm taking more care and consideration. I'm not doing any live streams this week. I may do one Sunday, I'm not sure, but I'm getting back to the basics. I'm getting back to the craftsmanship of making videos. I'm getting back like on Disruptive Mail. I made one video, I had a few special effects, voices. I keep hearing about that in the comments. It's like, man, you need to make more videos like this. That was just funny, that was just funny. I love that video. And I will make more videos like that and I'll, things will be segmented, but it ain't really about me. It's about you. And you need to make some decisions. Are you gonna become a craftsman of your craft? Or are you gonna become a technician? Because I can tell you, if you become really good with Facebook, you'll make six to, seven six to seven figures. If you become really good with Instagram, you'll make six to seven figures. If you become really good with blogging, you'll make six to seven figures. If you become really, really good with um, Instagram, you become really, really good with podcasts. You Once again, you have to be really, really good good. It's not enough to be okay. It's not enough to be, ah, you all right. You're not going to win in this current environment. You're going to have to be really, really good with sales. You're going to be really, really good with marketing. I haven't done it yet, but I'm almost to the point where I sell something every day with disruptive mail. Usually it comes in like three or four sales every other day, but my goal is by October to be selling something on disruptive mail every day. And that's what I'm working on. So I've actually kind of taken a step back and I'm looking around. I'm saying, OK, well, I'm going to do this because I feel that disruptive mail is going to do better than this channel. I'm not going to abandon this channel. I'm actually going to put more effort into this channel and I'm going to put a lot of effort into policy and conduct, put a lot of effort into disruptive money. And I already kind of see the way that the channels are going, but I'm not going to like take all my energy and go to disruptive mail because now disruptive mail has a solid base. Now I can get into more curated and crafty videos because when someone comes to the channel, which is starting to happen, they're like, Oh, here's another video. Here's another video. Here's another video. Here's another, which I call Netflixing, which has happened on this channel for years. Many of you have come in and found one video and you've been here two hours. That's what we want. But how did I get there? by making videos. How are you going to become good at sales? By making sales. How are you going to become good at email? By emailing. How are you going to become good at Facebook? By Facebooking. How are you going to become good at Instagram? By Instagramming. You've got to do the work before you can become a boss. Let's say it together. You got to do the work before you become a boss. Many people feel that because I am say I'm a boss, well, I'm a boss and Due to the fact that we have freedom of speech, no one better not check your ass because, you know, they would be insensitive and unkind to you, even though they're like tap you on the shoulder and go, um, you the boss of what? The boss of yourself? The boss of your house? Is that making you any money? Boss? Is that making you any money? CEO? Is that making you any money? President of such and such corporation? And once again, for you people, who've named your companies and you got your business cards and you're a CEO, uh, you're a boss and you're out every day grinding. I'm not talking to you. You've put that on your business card and you're trying to live up to it. I get it. I like that. I... <laughs> Congratulations. You're a man, you're a woman. But for the people I'm talking about who go around like I'm in the boss frame, like, 
uh, on policy and conduct. I had this conversation. I know plenty of people who have not assimilated and have been successful in this country. How many of you know what assimilation means? That is to take on certain attributes of a culture. American culture dictates that you speak English. If you speak English, you've assimilated. American culture dictates that you have a job. If you have a job, you've assimilated. American culture dictates that you should live in a house and an apartment. If you're not living on the land, the sum you built yourself, you've assimilated. American culture dictates that you wear clothes every day. American culture dictates that you take a shower every day. People are, and this, this is fits really right into the technician thing, because a lot of people use words that they don't know the meaning of, but you assimilate in 80 to 90% of American culture, but you don't do five to 10% like, well, I haven't assimilated, silly little rabbit. You've assimilated. You just don't know the meaning of the word. But anyway, that's neither here or there. I'll deal with that trick later. But for you, what are you working on? Let me know in the comments. What are you working on and becoming proficient? Let this, I'm going to be good in six weeks. I'm going to be good in six months. I can tell you, if you watch YouTube videos like I do, I've seen people who started two years ago and now they're emerging. I've seen people who start three years ago. Now they're emerging. But many of you don't want to get started. You're like, I don't have time for that. I'm going to wish. I'm going to hope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to close my eyes and hold my little fist tight and make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. And then when you open up your eyes, your life's exactly the same. Stop being afraid of doing the work. Uh, I had another person on this channel who was talking about that my last video was about affiliate marketing. I don't do affiliate marketing. Uh, another thing, and I want you guys to go deeper, not just my videos, but anyone's video, actually watch the video before you comment. We live in a society where we have people who don't read the book, but review the book. Don't take the course, but review the course. Don't even watch the movie and say it sucks because they feel that it sucks. Therefore, they don't have to go see it. Our review process has become asinine, stupid. And this is once again, why you have to do the real work, why you have to get down into it, get dirty and learn how to do something. Learn how to make money the right way. Because I'm telling you, when this recession hits, the people with the thinnest skill sets and the low priority jobs and the low skill jobs are going to be hard. So my suggestion to you is to start getting yourself some skills, some marketable skills today. Become competent, become proficient. Don't just be happy with, OK, I can do it. Make it where you are, become, are going to become the best that there is or the best version of yourself for 2018. Like, OK, this is the best I can do in 2018. And in 2019, I'm going to build on it. In 2020, I'm going to build on it. In 2021, I'm going to build on it. That's what you got to do, because if you don't do that, bad things are going to happen. And I don't want bad things to happen to you. You're like, you know, my buddies, my friends, my digital family I've never even met. And it's coming. It's coming. So go out and get yourself some skills. Let me know what you thought of this video. Be sure to get your free e audiobook and subscribe because there's more stuff that's coming. There's a lot more stuff that's coming. So with that, I will see you guys in the next video.